welcome back to my channel, The Transparent Homeschool. My name is Beth. Today I am going to be bringing you another game schooling video. Um, this one is going to be about math games and these are really fun, great educational value for math. It's still far enough away from Christmas to where any of these would make excellent uh, Christmas gifts. So if you're interested, pick them up for your family and see how they work out. Before we get started though, why don't you hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss any other game schooling videos. So the first one I have to show you is called Cash Bash. Um, this actually came in a box. I, we lost it years ago. Um, we got this probably four or five years ago. And all you have to do is change the batteries. It's a great game. You can choose different ways to play this game. Um, like making the amount shown on the screen and the, le and the least amount of coins. And so all of the coins and the dollar are here. And so you just have to like press them and whoever gets the answer first wins and it keeps track of all of your points. This is a really fun game. Um, like I said, we've had this for years and years and years. It comes from learning resources. There was a box, like I said, we just don't have it anymore. But Cash Bash is really fun. The next one I have to show you is Proof. This game is really fast paced. And if you're not kind of paying attention, you're gonna get left behind. On the box, it does say nine plus. You can tailor this to younger players. The whole point behind this is to collect cards using any operation that you can and proving your answer right. Uh, so it explains everything in the instructions. Basically what you're doing is you're making a, um, a grid, I think it's three by three, and you lay all of these cards out and they go all the way up to 100. So what I do when we play with our younger math levels, we just go one, uh, zero to 50 and then that way it cuts down on play time and it's easier for them to kind of make those equations. We just play with addition and subtraction. However, when we play like with other people, I open it up and you can use um, division, you can use multiplication, uh, you can use exponents, whatever you can to get the most cards. As you take the cards off the table, um, you feed more into the grid. And then at, like at the very end, you are really trying to like figure out which cards can go together. So for example, if I had these cards out, I had like a 2, a 45, a 5, a 0, and a 3. Okay, If I had all of these out, I could say, well, I know that 3 plus 2 equals 5. Right? I would have to say that out loud so that everyone could check my answers. I would take those cards in my hand, then you would put more cards in their place. When you play with older math students or adults, it's really interesting to see the equations that everybody comes up with. So proof is a really great math game. The next one is Sleeping Queens. I've talked about this game multiple times before, but uh, I definitely want to put this in here. So Sleeping Queens is one of my family's favorites. It is also a deck of cards. You have two different decks. You have um, like numbers and all of these different um, like action cards. So here's like a potion. Um, here's like a jester and everything. But then you have these queens and your job is to collect either four or five queens. And then depending on the point value on the top of the card, um, either 40 or 50 points. And so whichever you get to first, you win. But why this is in a math game is because throughout the game you will have just a bunch of these like number cards right and you can make different addition equations to collect more cards and so it's very fun uh, this like I said before this is one of my family's favorites but it is a great math game to practice those addition facts the next one I have to share with you is called play nine if you have any like golf lovers this kind of breaches math and golf together um, it's very creative in how they do that. So you're making a two by four grid with your cards and your job is you are trying to, at the end of the round, um, have the least amount of points. There are negative numbers in here. So you are adding, you are adding negative numbers. And so these, um, all are like golf themes. So one of them is like a mulligan. Here is a hole in one and then like a nice putt, par, eagle, all of that stuff. You keep track of everyone's points and then at the end of the game, after a few rounds, um, 
well, they're called holes. After a few holes, then you have a winner. This is really fun. You're trying to cancel out to, um, like the higher numbers to get you lower scores. So this is a really uh, great game. It is fun for the family, but once you get the hang of it, I mean, you'll just always play it forever. And the kids really like this game too. The next game is Sushi Go, another one of my family's favorites. This is also a deck of cards. Um, we definitely, we have our little game, um, our score sheet in there. But this is also a game where you're practicing um, math skills in a really fun way. There's addition and um, multiplication in here. So you have a hand of so many cards and then every round you are keeping one card and passing your deck to the next. And then each card means a certain number of different points. You are trying to get the highest number of points by the end of three rounds. The person with the highest number of points wins. The next one I have to share with you is Dragonwood. This game is again cards but there are also dice. What you are doing is collecting different um, combinations of these cards. You can either collect four of a kind, all one color, or um, a sequence of numbers. And when you do that you can uh, try to earn some of these magical items or defeat one of these enemies. You collect the cards. Here are the dice that you're using. And so depending on like how many cards you put down depends on how many dice you get to use. But you have to add up the dice, see how it compares with the number on the card. Lots of math involved with this, but really fun in like a fantasy way. You're trying to collect the two dragons at the end, these two dragons here. If you do that, you win the game. This game um, it has been around for a very long time, Rummy Cube. And goodness, I started playing this when I was like 14. So, um, <laughs> it's been around for a while. You get tiles and you're putting them on these stands and you have to make um, different patterns. It comes with all these different tiles with different colors and numbers. You're making patterns, you're making um, sequences. The first person to get rid of all of their tiles wins. So, Rummy Cube is a really great game. The next one is Sums in Space. This is a, just a really cute board game. Um, it is space themed but it is all about addition and it has a whole bunch of different game pieces there's some um game pawns and there's dice there's a little rocket that you're trying to use there are different ways to play this game also so it's a really fun interactive board here and here are your game pieces but uh, this is a great way to um practice your addition facts again in kind of a sneaky way that they don't think that they're practicing their math facts, even though they really are. They also have another um, game about multiplication and division by the same company, so check that one out too. This one is called Money Bags, so again, this is all about money. This one is fun because you are trying to collect uh, most coins. Here is the game board. It comes with a spinner on it up here. And as you are going through your game board, you're landing on different amounts of money. And depending on where your spinner um, lands, it will tell you, like, you cannot use dimes to make up that number. Or you cannot use um, quarters. You can use any coins here, or you can't use nickels. It comes with a bag of fake play money, the instructions, and it even comes with dollars. And you have um, tokens in here as well. So this is a great game if you have um, beginners with money uh, or if you have children who have been around money for a long time, this is also great. You are trying to figure out how to make different amounts of money based on what you cannot use and I think that is really neat. Next one I have to share with you is Even Stevens Odd. This game is really cool. There is Steven here and he sits in the middle of all of the players. You have different colored um, boards. You have dice that correspond to each color. You'll have three colored dice and three white dice. What you are trying to do is be the first to collect Steven here. I'm just gonna put him right here. And these cards here will tell you what you are doing. So for example, this one says three pairs of any numbers. This one says all dice add up to 10, doesn't matter. This one says, let's see, here's, it says all fives. You can go through this deck and kind of weed out the ones that do not fit the math level that you are on currently with your um, 
with your student or with your child. But we um, we usually play as a family, so I do try to put in some harder ones for my husband and I, but it is still a really fun game. The last two I have to share with you, I feel like I would not be doing math games justice if I did not include Monopoly. I currently have like four versions of Monopoly in my house. I'm not sure why. People keep buying it for us, but you know what? It's fine. So this one is Monopoly Junior. This one is obviously great for your younger kids. It has your cards, your properties, and the tokens. And this is like the money um, that you get for your people here. And it is basically the same as the regular version of Monopoly. However, like if you, if you land on a property, you do have to buy it. The same concept applies to where you have to pay people if you land on their property. The last person who still has tokens wins the game, so that is Monopoly Junior. And then obviously Monopoly is just Monopoly. Monopoly Junior is really great for really young math learners, right? So this does say five plus, like I said, it could be for as early as three or four, depending on um, your child. But this does not really go into math a whole lot. This does do like you owe me one one token, you owe me two tokens. So that's kind of all the math that this gets into. As you know, with regular Monopoly, you're dealing with lots of different um, values of money. You have to do mortgages, you have to find out what you need to make hotels, what you need to put houses on there. You have to break change, you have to give change back to people. So. This is a really great one if you want to talk about money. It's also a great strategy game. This is just like, you never think about Monopoly being a game schooling game. However, this is one that I feel like I could not make a math video without showing it. So those are all of the games that I have to share with you guys. I will be doing other videos. The ones coming next will be language arts games, science games, and history and geography. If you have any questions about any of these games, please leave them in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up before you head out, and I will see you guys in my next game schooling video. Bye!